Should we get on this Raw review? Should we do that? Well, I don't know. I was going to ask you who you thought was going to lose that fall between Aroha and Iwatani if you have Hazuki and Watanabe winning because it's Aroha. Aroha's only lost to Hayashi Shida, I believe. And but Shirley, Aroha, I can right? see Aroha losing in a way, and it doesn't, you know, you could have Iwatani lose too, but Aroha losing in a way where Watanabe does something dirty, and I think that's what's going to be the asterisk that you can put on there is going to be something that if she does go over, you know, Black Peach style, you know, whatever it's going to be, I think that's that's how that would go so you have an out for her loss, you know, being under nefarious means. Okay, I'll accept that as a legitimate answer. We can now move on to Raw. Although, with all of the departures, I think the show was more cooked than it was Raw in a lot of ways. Because it was overdone. It was well it was done overdone, at some over-seasoned yeah. Yeah. at some points as well. Well, it's Pittsburgh in a way, too, because it's like, you know, they charred it in some ways, but also there were some parts in there that just weren't done. Not done well, at least. And there were... It was just a... It was a rough show, and this is a rough time, and I'm not going to to bury the performers or anything like that. I swear the Street Profits look like they were, hadn't slept in 24 hours. I mean, everybody just kind of looks, they just look ragged, and with everything going on uh, with COVID and everything else, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, the half hour to start the show of American Alpha and RK Bro, that, was, that told the story for the whole night in that, I liked everybody that's involved. You know, it was a way to get to two matches, which they had to do, but because they didn't have a lot of people there and they had to fill a lot of time, literally it was a half hour of them coming out, cutting a promo. Then Chad Gable comes out you know, with Otis just standing there looking big and they jawed back and forth, which led to Chad Gable and Matt Riddle, which since you had so much time to fill, it was so short and not what I wanted. And then unfortunately for me, Otis goes out there, ultimately gets pinned by Randy Orton after an RKO. All that stuff last week about him being able to not have the neck to cause a wreck with the RKO. It it, it ends up taking place now, and it's like, damn. To me, you got that RK Bro match set up against either Montez. At the time, we didn't know whether it would be the Street Profits or the Mysterios, and it's like... Why can you not have American Alpha win because they're the bad guy team anyway? No matter which one of the three teams comes out of day one with those belts, you can have American Alpha face them. I and you can have that little thing that, you know, not that Otis is impervious to anything, but at the very least that he's got something on his resume. I think that that was the disappointing part for me in that the Street Profits have been out because of COVID or whatever the issue has been. And now they come back and it's like, damn, you know, that whole thing was really just a placeholder and I think a waste of American Alpha. Yeah, I'm not going to complain anytime you can get some action between Riddle, Chad Gable, Randy Orton, Otis in there. But I would like to see, and I think a lot of people have the same sentiment, they like to see Chad Gable especially because Otis has gotten somewhat of a push, uh, but they like to see Chad Gable get a little bit more. And when you have all those parts out there uh i think they deserve more time especially in the ring because the promo to set this up went on too long and it was largely uneventful chad gable and otis just came out and they set up the match why not give them more in ring time the crowd was ready for it. the crowd was hot throughout the show uh they enjoyed the action here but you had riddle pick up a pinfall and i don't know probably three minutes maybe four minutes and then the otis and orton match went through a commercial but it wasn't long, you know, we're, we're talking maybe five, six minutes there. It's another and four minutes. Yeah. So, I mean, when you have those guys out there, they're all over with the crowd to a certain degree. Certainly Gable and Otis are more over than their push are. And RK bro, I think is one of the best acts WWE has right now. So let them shine in the ring, you know, and <sighs> I mean, and I don't want to have... see Orton, and I don't want to see Orton and, and Riddle broken up anytime soon. I know they're like, well, no. what about WrestleMania? And I can see them wanting to do that. Don't do it, my God! Don't do it. I think they're better off as a team. And you know, Mike, I want to absolutely bury the terrible finish in Damian Priest and Dolph Ziggler, where Damian Priest just beat up Dolph Ziggler for too uh... long. He got mad. But it, I mean, if you're dead set on doing something like that on one of these shows, why not have Randy Orton do it to Otis? 
and give them a win? Or why not have something happen there where there's a DQ and the Alpha Academy has some reason to come back and face off against these guys again? Because unfortunately, even though I know that they're great wrestlers, I don't believe that they stand a chance against RK, bro. Yeah, and that's that's a big issue, and that's the problem, and that's one of the reasons that why wrestling worked back in the day, and why you it's important to have a lower mid card, a mid card, an upper mid card. You need slots. You need to win certain things against certain guys, and you know, again, it's just it's simple pro wrestling booking that unfortunately they just refuse to do. And I do want to fast forward to the Ziggler Priest match because you brought it up in that. I look at Damian Priest and I think, Jesus, you know, there's a guy who's got it. That He's got age on him. He's got life experience on him. He looks like a killer. He's got a kind of a cool backstory. I mean, it's just there, there are these so these built in advantages, but they can't help themselves. And you can see it happening where they want Damian and they want Priest. And Priest is going to be the guy that goes out there and, you know, he's trying to fight off the urges, but then something happens and now we're going to have Damien. And it's like, oh, no, this is really what they're going to do. This is what they have planned for this guy is this dual personality, basically like Finn Balor has, but it's going to be Damien and the Priest. I can see this. Am I crazy? No, I think you're heading in the right direction there because what happened is Dolph Ziggler slapped him. And I was thoroughly enjoying this match. You know, Dolph Ziggler is highly underutilized i mean it's been said for years but the guy is a great performer but he's out there he slaps damian priest in the face and all of a sudden damian priest just can't help himself he has to take down ziggler ground and pound him beat him up in the ropes and not obey the referee's five count just the dirt worst the absolute lowest bottom of the barrel Brian Alvarez level finish that they came up with there. And that's one of my biggest complaints is I start getting invested in some of these matches. I'm watching this match. I'm like, I like what I'm seeing. This happens all the time on SmackDown too. And then we just get these terrible, terrible endings. And it's painful, Mike, because you know, watching most of the other companies, you're not going to be dealt that hand at the end. You're not going to be fed that terrible dog food dessert at the end of your meal like you get sometimes with wwe and you know what folks we're we're, we're pushing up towards the end of this show for for today and you know i was watching miz and maurice and edge out there and you you saw that big thing of chocolate syrup come down and take the place of the the brood bloodbath because we can't have blood anymore so we're going to pour chocolate syrup all over them i guess that's what that was and i can't do this with brian so i'm going to ask filthy to think about this over break and ask him when the last time he was rolling around with a woman in white underneath a whole bunch of chocolate syrup i'll let him ponder that and as well as you too we'll be back from break lance russell music wrestlers are alive it is Wrestling Observer Live today. I'm Oreo the Orca. Do you have a blowhole rating system? Like, if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, six this, squirts? this match was, was uh, two and three-quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show, and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey, look at that, holy hey. mother of God, look what we've done here. You broke a leg, is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibula. Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Danhausen. You know, Danhausen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Kane ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Dan Helsen, when that match took place? Oh, about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh. Also, one time Dan Helsen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Helsen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions 
of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.